This is the legacy left behind by a community of people known for their eclectic mix of Eastern and Western sensibilities. A neighborhood that still retains an old world charm within modern Singapore. This is Katong, home to the Pranakans. Pranakans began as early as 926 AD where the Chinese maritime traders arrived at the Malay archipelago. They intermingled with the local Malay communities and settled in the ports of Penang and Malacca. They then started their families and soon travelled to Singapore. Peter Wee is a fourth generation Pranakan who's lived in Katong for over 50 years now. Well, Tanjung Katong, Katong and the East Coast uh, the areas where the Pranakan own bungalows and uh, houses. It's like a retreat. So in the weekends, they will come and spend the time in this area. And it is by the beach and then uh, they have family gatherings and uh, lots of hawkers at that time. As Singapore developed, the Pranakans traded, planted and invested and soon became the most powerful Chinese in the early history of Singapore. And one of the best ways to look at what Pranakan life was like is to visit their homes. Peter inherited the Katong antique house from his grandfather, Mr. Tan Cheng Ki. Mr. Tan and many of the earlier generations of Pranakans were important pioneers of Singapore. They were some of the wealthiest Singaporeans responsible for much of Singapore's development as a trading centre. The Pranakans were also a very influential community with strong ties to the colonial administration. The British favoured them in business for their good command of the English language. And the Pranakans, in turn, developed a fascination for all things British. The layout of their homes reflect this. Pranakan home that is very classic you find nowadays in Singapore has these distinct features of uh, western on the outside and the interior compartments of the first hall, the second hall, the courtyards and the kitchen. This is all very Chinese. Mm -hmm. And some of the homes would have some Chinese motifs on the walls on the exterior side of these uh, Pranakan homes. Since its heyday, just before the Second World War, much of Pranakan culture has been in decline. Many families have left the old neighbourhood, either settling in newer areas or even building new empires overseas. Some like Peter remain, still practising the widely cherished traditions of his people and preserving the rich cultural heritage of the Pranakans. During the Japanese occupation, the Second World War, uh, much of the wealth of the Pranakan families were lost. And that is the major aspect of the decline of the culture. For the present time, there is a tremendous surge of interest in this culture because uh, many of them realised uh, the unique aspect of the Pranakan culture. It encompasses uh, Chinese, Malay and Western. Katong's heritage architecture continues to stand proudly despite the changing times. Travelling through these boulevards and charming little streets, one can still find grand bungalows and colourful shop houses, remnants of the golden era of Pranakan culture. Some buildings and houses have even been protected as conservation structures. So the architectural heritage of the neighbourhood will be preserved for future generations of Singapore. Now, here's a little known fact about Pranakan houses. These peepholes that allow residents to observe calling visitors. It acts as an uh, extra eye or a spy eye. So that when you're upstairs, if the, somebody knocks at your door, you can just peep and see whoever is there. Because in the early days, you can remember, all the young maidens do not go outside at all. So that hole has been often used by people in the house to peep into whoever is your visitors. While fewer Pranakans remain in Katong today, Singapore Pranakans continue to gain prominence in society. They add colour to the culture of Singapore. To them, Katong is not just home, but a place where the spirit of the forefathers continues to thrive. Mm -hmm.